Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and we're going to be discussing graphics cards. Both NVIDIA and AMD are going to have to share their own videos, so everyone cuddle up together and stay friendly, okay? All right, I, I'm taking you at your word, you shall do so. Anyway, so with the AMD side of things, we're going to be uh, discussing the retail pricing for the 500 series. This is the suggested retail pricing, so if you get some gouging, that's not, well, the fault of AMD, most probably. And also the specifications of the card, and also some final images of the various GPUs in question. But we're going to start out with NVIDIA, because this one's a bit of a mystery, so I want your suggestions of what it could be in the comments. Seriously, this one's quite weird. So, it's coming. I know what you're thinking. What's coming? I don't know. That's kind of the whole thing. Um, on the 29th of April, there is going to be an announcement from NVIDIA. What the announcement shall be remains a mystery. It has been announced first by NVIDIA Italy, of all places. And there are a couple of different things you could immediately say. The first is, well, a graphics card. I just don't know what graphics card it could be at this point. I mean, it could be, you know, the... GTX 1080 Ti 0 0.5 um, has very slight increases in clock speed edition, but very unlikely. It could be an interim card. I don't know what that could be. Maybe the 1060 Ti something. I don't know. Or it could be something more shield related. There are some rumors that NVIDIA have been working on a shield system for some time. Whether that's the case or not, I just don't know. I mean, it could be like a Pascal version of the Shield console, which would be kind of weird, and I don't necessarily know if Nintendo would be super happy about that, given what we know about the Switch's hardware. But I say that, and if you factor in the Switch, obviously you have, well, you know, Nintendo's own stuff on running on the system. So it has the Marios, the Zeldas, plus... Um, well, you know, their own ecosystem, so I guess it wouldn't exactly be a competing console in that respect. So it's just a bit weird. Let me know what you think it is. Do you think it's a new graphics card? It's obviously not going to be Volta. I say obviously, and well, nothing's obvious in technology. It's a good possibility that, you know, it could be a completely surprising announcement. I don't think it's going to be a GPU that's, say, the 1080 Ti or something like that that's suddenly got HPM2 aimed at the regular retail customer. I don't think that, that's going to happen. I personally believe the most likely thing is it's a new Shield type of system. And the reason I believe that is NVIDIA being pretty aggressive marketing the Shield right now. Um, so it would make some level of sense. But, I say all of that, let's go into the RX 500 series. So this information is from videocards.com. And this information is not, um, well... This, this information, excuse, excuse me, is including VAT. So that's about 20%. Obviously, that does depend upon your country. And this is in euros. So in short, you can easily do the conversions to, say, USD or Great British Pounds or, you know, um, you know, Venus Kroners or whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, that could be, you know, slightly incorrect. And obviously, we all know there are some shipping taxes, if you will, <laughs> that are generally applied on top of the the VAT, so it's all kind of downhill, but still, at least we get a rough idea of what the GPUs are going to be. Um, starting with the 588 gigabytes, it's 270 euros, then 240 for the 4 gigabyte card, and then for the 570, the 4 gigabyte model, that's 200 euros. It's kind of weird though, I I've said this for some time with the pricing. Now, with the 480, obviously, there were um, quite a lot of stories going around that you could unlock the 4 gigabyte model to the 8 gigabyte model. I don't want to focus too much on that in this video, but you could certainly do so. And I did make a lot of arguments that says, well, the 570 was a great buy. The problem with the 570 was the 580 was just quite close to it in terms of the 4 gigabyte model. And so, obviously, if you could unlock the 480 to the uh, a 4 gigabyte 480, there's so many 4s and 8s, it's bloody hard to keep track. But if you do have a 480, which was a 4 gigabyte model, and you could unlock it to the 8 gigabyte model, essentially, that meant there was only 40 ish Great British Pound or whatever your regional equivalent pricing would be between the 470 and, sorry, yeah, the 470 and the 480. So it, basically, the problem with the 480 is it became its own biggest enemy. Uh, the 400 series became its own biggest enemy. So it's going to be interesting to see if you can unlock the 500 series. Wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't. But anyway, we'll quickly go over the specifications. I think they're pretty well known at this point. 
What we did confirm just a while ago is that it's a basically Polaris 10, but a slightly different version of the silicon. I say slightly different, not in that they've increased IPC of the silicon or anything like that. As far as we can understand it at the moment, it's still essentially the same thing. It's just got higher clock speeds. So that means that if you get the 580, you get 2,304 stream processors, 144 TMUs, and 32 ROPs. The chip does clock itself to 1340 MHz boost, but there are a lot of GPUs, from what we can understand, that are hit hitting 1500 MHz plus. This is with a 256 GB per second of memory bandwidth. Now, it's going to be quite interesting because the reference model has one distinctive difference over the 480, and that is it has an 8-pin power connector compared to the 6. So, in theory, we should see some custom models which have 8 plus 8, um, or perhaps 8 plus 6. That's pretty good. You know, that does mean that clock speeds are going to be up quite considerably, whereas the RX 570 is basically the same thing as the Polaris 20, but has lower clock speeds at 1200 MHz boost, and just 2048 cores. So... That's not too shabby. I mean, it, it, once again, these cards are not setting the world alight in terms of innovation, but they're good for what they are. Perhaps the GPU budget king might be the RX 560 for now. It has the un, unimpressive, unassuming name of Polaris 21. Not exactly a unique and splendid flower, is it? But still, while it might not be unique, it does pack a lot of punch. It's got 800 nicks. 896 stream processors, 56 TMUs, and 16 ROPs. So it's quite weird because this is unlike the unlocked 1024 stream processor variant. From what we can understand, there might be BIOS unlocks. There are some rumors that there will be BIOS unlocks available for, for the 560 to basically make it the full 1024 stream processor card. But at the end of the day, it is a rumor. Do not buy this card until, you know, with the with the hopes that it will unlock at the end of the day. And this GPU will puts out a boost speed of around 50, uh, sorry, 1300 megahertz, which is about two, uh, two T-flops. Not exactly amazing, but once again, this is not aimed at people wanting to play at 4K specifically, is it? Uh, the rumors peg the 550 for those wanting a card that's in this type of area. Uh, it's supposedly going to be based on the Polaris 12 silicon. I say supposedly because although most of this stuff is confirmed in terms of the leaks that have popped out, you know, there have been GPU Z screenshots or whatever, at the end of the day, until the unit is sitting there at your home, you know, you can buy it readily. It's up to you if you want to believe the rumors, pretty much is what I'm coming down to. But it only has 640 stream processes. Stream processors, I'm having one of those days, aren't I? 40 TMUs and 16 ROPs. So it's putting out about 1300 megahertz on the core and has a 2 or 4 gigabyte memory um, configuration. Obviously, that card is going to be really cheap. The rumors peg it to be under 100 US dollars. Um, quite frankly, if you have a, um, a GPU at that kind of uh, pricing, then obviously it's going to be something along the lines of aiming at uh, Counter-Strikes or perhaps, uh, you know, Overwatch at non-4K resolution, basically. But it is a nice card. And quite frankly, I think the 500 series is certainly going to have a lot of fans. The proposed release date for these GPUs is going to be April 18th, so only a few days away. Personally, I think they're going to be nice graphics cards for the price, for the budget. And yes, they are, technically speaking, a rebranding slash slight tweak. But I don't really have a problem with that. Um, in the, well, they're a little bit faster than what you've already got. Honestly, it just kind of makes sense for the marketplace. Because ultimately, it means that AMD have nice graphics cards at a cheap price that suit the average user. I'm sorry, but... You know, while the GTX 1080 Ti or whatever is a really nice card, and I'm not bad mouthing it at all, it's a really good GPU. Most individuals cannot um, basically justify putting down 400, 500, 600, 700, or even a thousand US dollars or whatever on a graphics card. They just can't do it. And something like a 480, I mean, to be honest, I have a GTX 1080 in one of my rigs, but I also have a 480 and another one of my rigs. And quite often, because obviously you've got the whole Steam Cloud syncing thing, most of the time, just because of the way that I'm currently gaming, just 
with what displays I've got plugged in because I'm doing benchmarking and other stuff. A lot of the time I will just be gaming on the system that's got the 480 on a 1080p display. Not because the 4K, you know, uh, settings at ludicrous resolutions aren't, you know, amazing and all they are. I'm just saying that when I'm playing Mass Effect Andromeda, for example, the 480 does a pretty damn good job. So something like that is generally good enough for most gamers. So I think these cards are going to target that really nice segment of the market. Slight aside, actually, being sent a GTX 1060 to test, and the reason I bring that up is a number of you have asked me regarding the 1060 testing for via the 480. And I've not been able to do so because I've not had a 1060. That simple. Uh, but I've been sent one. Uh, hopefully it's been sent out today. That's from Zotac. So I'm finishing off their 1070 review. Uh, for the Ampic stream, and I've been sent a GTX 1060 for review, so hopefully I can do that, and I've also got a G GTX 1050 Ti to test out as well as an RX 470, so I want to do some stuff with that to see how the Ryzen handles. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for this video, actually. Thank you, Arizons. Bye for now.